So as the country braces for the planned nationwide protest on August 1st, organized by Nigerian youths in response to escalating economic hardships, a recent development shows that the momentum behind these protests may be waning. And according to reports, several groups have withdrawn their support, citing a variety of reasons, including concerns about potential violence and a preference for dialogue with the government. Now, despite these setbacks, the underlying frustrations remain palpable among many young Nigerians who continue to grapple with high unemployment rates, inflation, and a general sense of disenfranchisement. Now, the question remains, are the youth ripe for dialogue, or is there a deeper disconnect that needs addressing? As some groups push for constructive engagement with authorities, others believe that protests are necessary to force meaningful change. The outcome of these protests could have significant implications for Nigeria's socio-political uh, social landscape. Hmm. And so to explore these issues and to further and also to discuss this in detail, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests. Our very first guest for today is uh, Mr. Boega Akoshili. He's a special advisor to the governor, Baba Jide Somolu, on media and publicity. And he'll be joining us later as during the course of this program. We also have Mr. Omoye Leshoware. He's a renowned politician and activist. And he joins us live via video chat. And also here in the studio is Kundayo Titilayo Dokas, who is the chairperson of the National Female Student Association of Nigeria, uh, NF San Lagos chapter. Each of them will bring their unique perspectives to the table and they are going to be offering us some insight into the complexities of youth activism and government response in today in Nigeria. Again, many thanks uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, first off, I want to come to Mr. Shore, who's joining us via video chat. Good morning, sir. Thank you once again. Big question is, are the youth ripe for dialogue? What do you think, sir? Well, I wanted to first and foremost uh, thank you for bringing me on your show this Sunday and uh, also very quickly correct the earlier impression uh, in your intro that the protest is waning because some people, as you claim, are withdrawing. That is not correct. The protest is not waning except if you are not listening to the right channels. Uh, the people you claim are withdrawing are people who are never never part of the protest in any way, form, or nature. They are the people the government cobbled together, people who were likely paid or uh, misinformed and asked to go out and try to demobilize the public. That is not new in the history of protest. Now you talk about dialogue. Protest itself, and hear me out, is a form of dialogue. The difference between dialoguing generally, uh, physically, and the dialogue that is conducted by protest is that protest dialogue is louder, you know, and it is the best way to dialogue with the deaf. When I mean deaf, the Nigerian government or most African government are tone deaf. So if you are sitting across the table from them and not listening to you, it is when they know that the people are not going to accept whatever they are rubbing over their heads, that they start to listen to you. And the communication at that point, the dialogue is stronger, it's more powerful, it's more potent and more effective. So protest itself is dialogue. Uh, I just want to clarify that. But in this case, dialogue doesn't come first as you are trying to define it. And the protest has its own set objective. We have an agenda, we have demands, we have clear and stated, you know, uh, deliverables. Uh, we also have a timeline for which when the process will start and the first uh, number of days it will take, and possibly uh, 
several other days that will follow until the conditions are met. So this is a very well organized protest that is driven by data and is driven by technology and total commitment uh, from uh, a lot of Nigerians, both youth, I mean young and old. Uh, uh, Mr. Shawara, it makes me wonder, right? I, I wonder how, what you think about uh, these uh, bodies and uh, civil societies and organizations who are, you know, removing themselves and withdrawing support uh, for the protest. What are your thoughts uh, on, on, on those groups? I have just addressed them. I, I don't know them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of groups in Nigeria, you know, armed force groups. Some of them don't exist except when there is a sabotage to be done. Some of them exist just created uh, what you call special vehicle NGOs, uh, and some of them are called NGIs, non-governmental individuals. So whenever there is an opportunity, these opportunities will show up and uh, capitalize on it and make some quick box from it and uh, move on with their lives. What I'm saying to you is that this, they were never part of any conversation. I've seen some of them. Uh, they were never part of those. You cannot pull out from a protest you had not part of the plan for. Uh, but you can say that you don't want protest. And that is their right too. It's you know they have a right to express a divergent opinion about how the rest of us or a majority of Nigerians want to go about uh, addressing their social, political, and economic uh, concerns. Oh, okay. Mr. Shore, um, I'm, I'm going to let you know that I'm going to warn you that this might spill over into the next hour because we have so much to discuss. Mm -hmm. We're also going to take a break somewhere in the middle here. But we do have the chairperson of one of those buddies here with us inside of the studio. I will direct a question to her only after we get back from this break. Let's take a short break. Back to this discussion in a minute. As we've been asking the very pertinent question, which is protest or dialogue, which is the answer? to good governance and joining us live in the studio is our guest we've been discussing with them uh, from earlier on on zoom is uh, mr shore uh, he's a politician and activist and he joins us live via video chat mr shore many thanks for being patient and joining us we also have with us live in the studio uh, she is a kundayo titiloya tutilayo Cast. She's the chairperson of the National Female Student Association of Nigeria and a San Lagos chapter. We also did have earlier Mr. Boiga Akoshile, who's the SA to the Governor of Lagos State on Media and Publicity. I'm sure he's going to join us. Yeah, he'll be rejoining us this in. conversation. Um, just before we went on that break and then the news, I did say that we we're going to come back. And also, we have representing one of the bodies that have pulled out of the protest here with us. Um, and that's talking about Ms. Titilaya here in the studio. But before that, we also talked about something. I um, wanted to go back to a conversation, the conversation from Mr. Shore regarding the groups, um, the faceless groups, in quote, who have dropped out. However, Mr. Shore, I just wanted to read some of the groups that have joined, or rather that have dropped out, and we're talking about groups like the National Association of Lagos State Students, the National Association of University Students, the Lagos State Chapter, National Association of Polytechnic Students, and also, uh, to name a few, National Female Students Association of Nigeria, of which we have uh, the chairperson here with us by name of Titilayo Ekundayo. So I'm going to be asking Titilayo now one uh, a, a very interesting question, which is, first off, let's get your take on this. Why exactly is your association pulling out of the mass protest for August 1st? All right. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, I would like to appreciate this program. And secondly, my association is actually pulling out of this protest because we have no association with a set of people who organize this protest. Who are the people organizing the protest? We don't even know them in court. So why did you say you don't have association with them? Yeah, because they call themselves Nigerian youth and they are centering their protest to Lagos. And Lagos is a peaceful state. I am the chairperson of the female students here in Lagos State. And we have the three C's. Before we can confront, we need to consult and consolidate. And after consulting and consolidation, I don't think we have the potential to go into confrontation, don't you which think is that, the protest. Don't you think that Lagos has this main character energy that it constantly has? The conversation about protest has been on a nationwide stance. Uh, if that means, because we saw the governor call traditional rulers from all the geopolitical zones in Nigeria. We saw them call all the chief heads. We saw them, they, they saw the presidency speak to all of the governors from the APC uh, forum. So why do you think it's just only Lagos? Because I noticed that the entire group's who have pulled out and mostly Lagos chapters. Yes, 
mostly Lagos because here in Lagos, I don't think there is this much hardship here in Lagos. Because so looking no hardship in Lagos. Yes, there is, but I think the governor has been working towards that because recently there is something like Onjeiko that the governor put in place for all Lagos states to be able to benefit from it, thereby reducing the hardship in Lagos. So you think that Lagos is insulated from the hardship that they... No, that no, is... don't quote me there. No, you said, no, I'm not misquoting, I want to be clear, because okay. you said Lagos is not experiencing hardship like the rest of, of Nigeria. Yes. That's what you said. Yes. And then you said that the Lagos has been doing initiative, one of them is Onje Oko. Yes. So I asked again, so does that mean that we are insulated from the rest of the things that now Nigerians are facing. Yes. And so you don't think that Lagosians will Yes, out yes, because looking at it, there have been more protests in Nigeria and it hasn't leased to any way. Mm -hmm. Rather, we have vandalization of the um, government's properties. Mm. Some of the protests that happened years back, we have the protests during the June 12th, we have the protests during... Um, Good luck, Jonathan's regime, and this recent protest of the NSAT, which most of our youth actually died. So I would think, instead of the youth going into the protest, why not form a body and have a tete-a-tete -a -tete with the government? Because during dialogue, it's still better than this protest whereby we'll be losing our youth. Mr. Shore, I said that most of the youth, most of the, uh, the <laughs> groups that pulled out are groups that are just formed. How long has your, your association been on? The association has been on here for over five years. So it's been existing for five years? Yes. So if I count that back, that should be 2019? Yes. How long have you been in school? I, was, I got admission in 2019, so I'm in mean my final year. So you're among the organization that formed it? That's no, I wasn't part of the organizations that formed it, so but I'm a member of the you, association. When did, you assume, when, did you, when did you assume presidency of the organization? I assumed my position January this year right, as the chairperson. You. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very curious as to exactly what other things your association had been or is known for doing from before now. Um, but let's come back to Mr. Shore. Uh, Mr. Shore, so now the question is if the youth are ripe for dialogue. However, many bodies have called for the youth to have a, a, well, at least an agenda, a request. What exactly are they looking? Sort of like a destination. After all, how do you know where you're going or if you've gotten to where you're going if you don't have a destination? What do you have to say regarding this request for um, a, a list of demands from the youth? Well, let me uh, first and foremost uh, respond to the station of the young lady, Titulaya. I don't think it's fair, and I mean it, to be throwing young persons like this who are still at formative ages of ideas in national issues the way you have done it. I, I, it's unfair to her. Apparently, if somebody just didn't even properly prep her and you just throw her national TV, the whole world is going to be watching. Some years down the line, this person is not going to feel happy that uh, she's unable to defend us. And she has already said it in all fairness to her that they were not part of the planners, that they don't know them, and that the planners are faceless. So, and that was what I was saying earlier, that they were not part of people who planned this. They weren't part of, they don't even know what it's all about. You know, somebody just asked them to go to your state studio and go and debunk something, and she she's struggling with this. And instead of being upset with her, I'm upset with the station for not doing their background job. Bring people who understand what national issues are. These are young persons whose future I am trying to protect. As she has told you, she just got into university 2019, by 2019, I was already in detention under the Buhari regime. She's new to all these issues. She's new to the troubles of Nigeria. And there's no point throwing these little interesting young people before national audiences where they will look back years later, their children will start blaming them. Mommy, why did you do this? Why did you allow yourself to be, to be put before national uh, uh, audience without preparing yourself or understanding even what the issues are. So having said that, the demands are clear. This station has read the demands before to me. Uh, the entire country is aware of the demands. On our side, we presented 15 clear demands. I would say that non-negotiable, non-negotiable. And uh, all of this has been available to the government 
And I also wanted to let you know that we actually began relating with the government on certain aspects of uh, procedures for the protest. We got a lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mwade Burua, who was a former student union president of uh, Obafemi Awolo University, to write to the police and the DSS, asking them uh, to submit the names of DSS and police officers or the army who are going to be involved. The army has no business, by the way, in engaging in any form of uh, uh, process in this protest. The army has no business in internal affairs of the country. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. And he has written to them. Our Abuja colleagues also wrote to the Minister of uh, the Federal Capital Territory to allow the protest, uh, the protesters to camp out at the, at the Eagles Square. So these are all procedural formats that is going to lead to August 1. So when they are saying people are faceless, how can somebody be faceless and they write to the minister? How can somebody be faceless and they have a senior advocate of Nigeria writing to the IGO police, who has also responded? Because they know these groups are not faceless. These are very credible, high-integrity individuals who want to protect the future of our young people, including the lady you had on the armchair uh, in your office, who, by the way, I appreciate for coming here today. Yeah, uh, I just we'll... wish that... Uh, it was not, she was not misled to come here today, which, which no, makes me No, sorry, I'd like to address that. Now, this is a sample of the people we're talking about. This is a sample mm. of the people who are going out there on August 1st to go protest. These are the people that Nigeria is actually listening to right now. Everything else has come to a halt. We're not talking about River State. We're not talking about Kano Emirates. We're not talking... Everybody has their focus on the youth. Whether you like it or not, these are the people, whether their ideas are fully formed or immature, these are the people that are right now in the center of everything that's happening. So her as a representative, I believe she also needs this platform as well to express her view as well and that of her association. And I do appreciate, your, I do appreciate what you say about um, the young lady here, but let's focus on the fact that these are the youth. And here, well, we are providing that platform for everybody to have, well, the same amount or equal amount of uh, uh, an avenue to express themselves. I, I must also add that she wasn't coerced to be here. We I sent a, an invitation to all of these groups uh, who have pulled out of the protest, and they said that they are Nigerian youths, in quotation marks there, and they do not know or identify with other Nigerian youths from her submission, as you can hear. And so we extended that invitation to which she accepted to be here. And these questions are very important. As media, uh, these questions are important to be asked in terms of why are you pulling out? Who is your organization? You represent the face of this organization. What are your views? I think that, uh, and you, they can either, and she had the choice to either say, no, I'm not going to come, and yes, I'm going to come. So let's refocus now and let's um, ask the very important questions. We want to take example from what's happening inside of Kenya. The youth have also, well, they've made their voices heard. The Kenyan government, especially the president, has well, acceded to plenty of their demands, but yet the protest continues to go on. The question regarding Kenya now is exactly where does the box stop? Where would the compromise be? Ruto has had this instance since from before with the doctor strikes and now with the youth. So in the Nigerian instance, where are we going to protest up until before we meet a round table where people can actually come, converge, discuss? Mr. Shore. I mentioned... Yes, uh, I mentioned to you that uh, the demands for this protest has been established. There are 15 of them in number from our end. And um, we, the entire country is aware of it. Um, I'm hoping that you are aware of it. You have read these demands before. Because I've been on a show here before. Mm -hmm. And I hear it all the time because I watch a show online. Uh, and... Uh, I'm aware that everybody's aware, but so the way the demands are framed are such that there are 15 non-negotiable demands listed one to five and one to 15. And until those are met, there's no negotiation. That has been established. And the government is aware of these positions, they're aware of these issues that we are not protesting because we are looking for negotiation. 
all right? We are revolting because we want we want to negotiate our liberty and freedom. That is what has been made very clear as to the way forward. And just briefly again on the young lady, please, I did not intend to embarrass her. If she felt embarrassed, I apologize. I just felt like she was so truthful in saying that she was never part of the protest. Thank you very much. And there was no business to have brought her here to be asking her why she's pulling out. What happened in Lagos with them, and I hope she will join after this, because I'm I'm very happy that she's getting very educated about what's happening. What, what is happening? What happened is that the Lagos State government brought them to a meeting, all the students. I have a letter here from one of them apologizing to Nigerians. They never told them they were coming to denounce protests. It was when they got to the protest that they were they were cobbled together in a room and then they were told to pull out for the protest. They never knew. This these guys were naively put together. And now she's on national TV. Like I said, I apologize to her if she feels embarrassed. But I just don't want a situation where we we as adults don't do our due diligence and we put people in situations that will embarrass them for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's I, that's all I'm concerned about. But please, apologies to her. Thank you uh, very much. You that, we uh, also have with us joining via video chat, Mr. Berga Kosile. He is the special advisor to the Lagos State Governor um, on media and publicity. Mr. Kosile, you're welcome. Thank you for joining, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Mr. Koshile, very good morning to you. Um, uh, let me also bring you into this conversation uh, the, from earlier uh, guests in the studio, Titilayo Dokasa Kundayo. I said that uh, Lagos State uh, sometimes always seems to be the, the center, uh, given even its slogan, Center for Excellence, in my, it is always a center for things like this. And there's been concerns about uh, uh, the protests go melting into violence. So given... Uh, experiences or events from earlier, what steps is Lagos State taking to address the grievances of the youth? And how can you ensure or plan to ensure that this uh, doesn't melt down to anarchy and chaos? Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's no brainer. Lagos is the center of everything. Mm -hmm. so, all that. Um, the target, primary target has been Lagos. Um, maybe, you know, you know, in the past couple of um, um, years, Abuja has always been Lagos now. Um, and, you know, the, the reason is not far-fetched. If you, if you look at the way Lagos is, it's the center of business, commercial activities in the country and everything. Uh, you know, trade and all that, and of course, you know, is you know, is the most cosmopolitan uh, city in Nigeria, where you have all manners of people, um, all ethnic groups. There is no ethnic group that is not fairly represented in Lagos. No, all ethnic groups are well represented um, here in Lagos. So it's, it's um. It's it's from strategic point of view. If I were planning a protest, I would naturally target Lagos because Lagos is the hub of media, where the international media will be focusing, where everybody will be focusing. So my brother, you know, uh, you know, the comrade um, knows. I mean, you know, those of us uh, who come from you know journalism background, and you know, we 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 know all of these things. Uh, so. We, we know that where you target is where people like us will want to get our content, where we'll get our, our you know, reportage so that uh, we, we, we can report adequately. So Lagos is usually at the focus. And if you go into our past history, it, it is starts today. From time immemorial, from the days of... Um, um, the south, the the the, the west here, you know, the southwest of Nigeria usually was the the major, you know, place for agitation. Um, the days of um, uh, um, the the Ganifa enemies of this world, the Olisa Bakuba, the, I mean, when even some of us joined in in protests and in the, in, the, in 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 those days. But the most important thing 
that we need to take out is very simple. And there are two things. Where I stand, because I advise, and I'm a media person, where I stand is very simple. You cannot stop people from protesting. Nowhere in the world, section, section uh, 20 of the, uh, of the Constitution of Nigeria um, is very explicit about the freedom to assemble non-violent freedom to assemble and express how you feel about government. Whether you feel good or you feel bad about the government, you are entitled to that assemblage. You understand? So the, the people can, can protest, but what we are saying, you know, which is a major concern, is that if you look at the way protests have been in the last couple of years, it, the tone, the tonality of the protests have been such that it has to be violent. No, that's that's not that's so not that, right. So with all that's the intelligence, right. and that's why. Let me answer my question. Right. Let me land with, with the question. So that is not right. So what? This state government is saying Lagos State is working. Everybody knows, except one who lied uh, about that. But this thing is about the federal. It's not about any state. It's you know general. Now, if you want to protest, because you are also a component part of the federal, you understand. If you want to protest in Lagos, please ensure that it is orderly and it is done in such a way that you don't infringe on another person's rights. One, you do not tamper with uh, people's you know, uh, sources of livelihood because they also have rights. You, get, you do not tamper with government infrastructure. So these are some of the areas that the organizers of protests need to talk to their uh, you know, followers and protesters alike, that look, this protest is about we expressing ourselves, you know, they say it is bad uh, and, and bad governance or uh, and bad government. I don't know which one of the two because I have, you know, my, my analysis of, you know, when you want to end a government. I mean, there are constitutional ways of ending a government, but if you're saying uh, bad, bad governance, uh, there are ways you also uh, go about that. But, you know, that's, you know, left for uh, those, you know, that are handling all of that. But for us as a state, what we've been doing is to continue to assuage the feelings of the people, is to continue to engage. Mr. Governor has been engaging a lot of people, the, a broad spectrum of individuals, um, you know, from the market men and women, and people from local government, um, chairmen, from CDCs and CDAs, from civil society uh, organization um, to self-determination organization to the youth, to students, to everybody that look. And the message of the government is always very clear. Nobody is going to stop anybody from protest. We, we never even said it. At no point I write for the government. No, I never. You know, type anything that please, or you can't protest. No, nobody, I mean, I we protest. Need to move right. on, Mr. Kosele, if you do Mr. not Kosele, mind. So, we, nobody, it's just that make sure that it is within the confines of um, yeah, the law and don't do anything that will uh, 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 throw up a violence. That's just it. Mr. Koshile, thank you. Although you didn't answer my latter part of that question, but we're going to get into that. In the meantime, let me switch gears to uh, Mr. Showere. Uh, but first, I would like to get a reaction from Doc Cass, right? He, because I know that uh, from understanding, you said that uh, you wanted to re um, respond to something that he said. And it was, it's very, he said that there was a letter that he has and that um, associations, the students' associations pulled out after a meeting with certain representatives of the government. Do you like to respond to that? But what university are you at? I'm from Lagos State University. All right, fantastic. Please okay, so Mr. Shore, if I'm not mistaken, um, I would like to 
tell you that I'm representing a female student. I'm not representing the female youth, but the female students. So I'm speaking... Students of University of Lagos. Yes. Oh, sorry, Lagos State University, yes. Lasso. Not only Lasso, but the 10 universities in Lagos State. The 10 universities Besties in Lagos, Lagos State. State. So I'm representing them now. How many are your membership? We have um, stu um, students from all... Um, representatives across all schools in Lagos. How many are they? 10. 10. How many are your members? We have over 50 million. Uh, we have over 50,000 female students in Lagos State. So they, they are, are all members of your. Yes. How, because I, I, I'm not. When I was in university, I didn't register with all of the association. So how many are your? In members? as much as you're a female student, you're a member of the association. Even if you are participating or not, you're a member of the association. Uh, okay, gotcha. So in as much as you're a female student, just as we have the nuns, in as much as you're a student, you're a member of the nuns. You don't need to participate with their yeah. activities. But what I would like to say is the meeting that was held was to discuss about the universities in Lagos, our progress, and the things that we are to do. So now we find out during the conversation, we heard there are some set of people that are coming up with a protest, and we're like, we are not in support of that. Lagos State is safe and calm. With the students in Lagos State, whatever we need, we are requesting from the governor, and he's giving it to us. And of recent, we now have a student loan, of which we students have access to the loan. So I think we students do not even need the protest. Looking at it, protest would only lead to vandalization of the government's properties. And even we, the citizens, our lives is at stake. Because after the protest, what ends after the protest? You, you said that you have access to loans. you know anyone who's, who's, gotten access, who's gotten the loans? You know, any person from your membership, from your association who's had, had taken a loan? Um, right now, I don't know anyone, but my HOD actually sent me the link of how I can access the loan, and okay. he sent it to me to send it to all students. Do you know anyone who's applied? Yes, I know some of my classmates who applied. Okay. And I know definitely they will actually get the grant in okay. as much you know they definitely. can fulfill. Yeah. Yes, yeah. in as much as they can fulfill the um. We're, we're running out of time, so I'm going to come back to Mr. Shore. Mr. Shore, um, there have been arguments yeah. about the uh, leaders or proponents of the um, uh, protests that will be holding in August and talks about most of them not even being inside of Nigeria. What do you have to say about this? Well, this is uh, an irrelevant position, and I discussed that with uh, one of your reporters last week and the moment i finished they cut that part out and they're paying a million naira or close to it for bloggers who said our show is not in nigeria um it's irrelevant uh we live in a global era the world is now a global village and anybody who is in nigeria wherever they might find themselves is at liberty to participate in any issue affecting his country and uh, I want to bring it back to your notice that the person who is president of Nigeria today, uh, Bola Tinumbu, was engaging in not only just protests. The went abroad himself, Professor Wole Shuinka, Fayemi, and the rest of them. We're all together in Toko. We're all together at that time. Not together as in being in the same room, but we all believed in the pro-democracy struggle. They even set up a radio station abroad, broadcasting into Nigeria, illegally, as the military described it then, about the struggle for democracy. So it is really in South Africa, when they wanted to fire that apartheid, some people left and some people were inside and they were working. The most important thing is to focus on how to defeat oppression. And the theory of where you should be on protest day is dependent on institutional variables. I can be in Nigeria anytime I want to. How are you talking to me today? Virtually, right? Mm -hmm. So why is it I were able to talk virtually? Because there is technology that's digital in nature that allows that to happen. And I am also not only a Nigerian, I'm a member of the Nigerian diaspora, having been away from Nigeria since 1999, 
And you remember, I came back in, to Nigeria in 2019 to lead a protest because I've led several protests in my life. I could count up to 200 of them. And I was arrested and restricted in Nigeria for five years. I came back March this year after the federal government withdrew their charges shamefully uh, before an Abuja Federal High Court and gave me back my passport. You know, having done that, I arrived here and went back again on May 1st and 2nd to attend to another trial in Abuja on another trumped up charge brought against me by the police on behalf of uh, Senator Ned Unwoko. While I was in Nigeria, I organized the protests at the police headquarters to free a journalist, Daniel Ujuku of FIG, Foundation for Investigative Journalism. And he got freed before I left. So I am at liberty, and any Nigerians at liberty to get involved in Nigerian matters from wherever they want, at any time they want. The unnecessary conversation about where you are located, I know where you guys are headed. It is to continue to boost that. Well, Mr. Shawari, we ask the questions. Propaganda. We're not necessarily everybody, taking any position. Most of the there. comments that no, no, you've wait, made wait. are a bit salty, wait. but we'll, we'll take it. I would like to no, see no, if no, Mr. Kosile has a response please. to that, was, or maybe you know, even decided, a response to the question I, I asked him before. Come here. I decided to come here on your show because I want to express myself. Mm. You cannot shut me up. If you want, if you don't want me to express myself, you can just close the Zoom. Oh, absolutely. We can't shut you up, please. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Mr. So, sure, I'm, I'm here to ahead. express myself, and I'm not new to this. I'm a journalist like you too, so you can't shut me up. You have to let me express myself if you bring me here. So what I'm saying to you is that those things are relevant. Our focus is that we want to defeat oppression. We don't want to continue to have people in government who don't know what they are doing. Uh, I don't want to be hearing propaganda that Lagos is a center of excellence when after two hours of rain, Lagos goes underwater. And if you are not a scuba diver, you can't survive in Lagos. But that's a conversation for another day. We're here to talk about the nationwide protest that is in plan for August uh, 1st, what I call a revolt against bad governance in Nigeria. And that is why you must be fully aware that everybody's interested in this. The whole world is focusing on Nigeria already, looking forward to uh, Thursday next week, I think August 1st, to see how Nigerians from all walks of life, both at home and abroad, engage in this global battle to defeat uh, bad governance in Nigeria. And I want to say just quickly uh, that when you're talking about, uh, I think Akoshile was saying, they don't know whether it's end bad government or end bad governance. There's no difference between bad governments and bad governance because it's bad governments that uh that uh, that operates bad gov uh, bad governments that operates bad governance so if you defeat one you've defeated the other nigeria they use computer the leaders of nigeria they use radio where they turn the knob